Well, you brought up gear, and there's one gear question I have because the first time that I got introduced to you and your music, mm -hmm. it was like Robin Ford. Oh, he's the Dumble guy. Yeah. <laughs> you having literally serial number two Dumble okay. Overdrive special. I'm not sure about that. Okay, might be a myth, but uh, let's just, you should just go with it, whether you're sure of it or not, because it's I'm a nice sure. story. Sure. Um, but I'm curious. So for a lot of people, I, I know the hype. I've played through several Dumbles, and I think they're amazing amps. Mm -hmm. Now, I have other amps that I absolutely love, and I think other amps are actually more for me than a Dumble okay. is for me, which is fine. Yeah. What is it about the Dumble that makes it what it is and why is it so special? There's a couple of things that are, I think, important. First of all, it's a hundred watt head. Yeah. And uh, I've I've played the you know Dumble combos where it's like a fifty watt you know with a single twelve. I don't like them. I, I actually do not like them. I, I wouldn't choose that for my amplifier. So hundred watts, and that's loud. You know, it's it's not something that you take into studios and make records. I did. <laughs> up until up until the last couple of years, you know, when I, I started, you know, realizing that it doesn't, you can't use it. You can't use a hundred, a hundred watt head two by 12 cranked up to make a record with other people. It's just, uh, things have changed for me and how I work in the studio. So I've been trying to get my uh, sound down and I'm working now with, uh, uh, little Walter amps and it's a 50 watt head. And, uh, and a single 12 in the studio. And I wanted to bring that onto the stage. Doesn't work. I need 100 watts and two by 12 to be me, you know? So that said, the Dumble just has this incredible, I, I kind of like to call it like an even sound curve. I don't think it's actually an appropriate way of putting it. But, you know, the lows don't get mushy. They don't explode down there and get mushy. The mids, punchy, but not too punchy, you know? Yeah. Uh, and the high end, bright, but not brittle. Yeah. You get too close to it, of course, it will hurt. <laughs> so for me, the Dumble, is, it's a live amplifier. Again, mm. I made every record I ever made from since Talk to Your Daughter until my last two recordings. So that's a lot of records over a 30-year period of time. You know, in the studio, I would just do it. I didn't know any other way to play. But once I got out here and I started working with my co-producer, uh, again, uh, Casey Wasner, it, it just became obvious that we, I needed to start working in a different way. So I have started working in a different way in the studio, but I still haven't been able to transition into a, a, a live performance, certainly not with my band, you know. I can go sit in with somebody else with a Vibrolux that I have that I really like. My pedal board, one guitar. Cool. It's got a bigger transformer in it, so it's got more headroom. Yeah, headroom is the, is the thing. You know, I love saturation, but when saturation gets saturated and it's done, you know, the, that experience for me is like, I need more. So the Dumble allows me to do anything I want to do. It's just incredible. It's like, it gives me the whole sound spectrum. Sure. Wide open. Yeah. And my amp is not too loud for me, you know. <laughs> I'd be too loud for somebody sitting in front, but I, I do watch that. And yeah. I, I never see people doing this. Yeah. And they're right there. They're like five feet away. And no, nobody's going like this, you know. Yeah. But it sounds so good. Well, there you go. I like that. You've, see, I'm a clean headroom guy. So what I do a lot of times is I end up using solid state amps. I just find oh. the best solid state amps I can. What's yeah. keeping you from, from using a solid state amp? Solid state has always just sounded a little brittle for me, you know, just square. Sure. I mean, like it, it might have something to do with the speaker that was in there. Yeah. You know, but I've always shied away from them. I tried them, you know, uh, years ago. And not since, you know what I mean? I mean, you're yeah. a younger guy. It's a, uh, you know, you're, you're more open to these things and the technology is <laughs> a lot better. It certainly has. Even Dumble said to me once, and I couldn't believe he said this. He said, oh, you know, Robin, solid state, it, it'll get there. It'll get to where you won't, you won't know. 
you won't be able to tell the difference. I just don't have any reason to go looking for it, you know, because I've got Dumble. I, I've got, and these little Walter apps, you know, not just to do a commercial, but seriously, they're really good, you know. For some people, they break up a little too soon, you know, and I totally get that. And again, you know, if I go out to play, it's going to be the Dumble, but the entire Pure record was made, not the entire Pure record, but 80% of the Pure album was done with this little Walter 50 watt head through a single 12. And that's in the studio. And I used the Dumble for a song called White Rock Beer, which is a through live performance. I used it for Blues for Lonnie Johnson, which is a full through live performance. And then the solo on um, Go, which is with Nate. It's an overdub. And uh, the solo on a song called Balafon, which was also an overdub. 